All right, what's going on guys? We are on round three, front nine, with the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour 2019. We have the lead card here. We have Lari, Tebu, Yale, and Vino. I am Will Schusterick, I'm with Idris Garcia, and we're gonna be bringing you some commentary. Yeah, I'm really excited. We got to know the course a little bit uh, in round one. It looked like the conditions were a little cold and rainy. These guys seem to have just battled it out and we've got a tight race at the top here. Yeah, this is round three, which is, I think, the final round here coming in. As you can see, Laurie with the negative nine, Temu minus eight, Yale minus eight, and Vino minus seven. Um, but even with them after those guys, it's a very tight race, even going all the way down to Oscar I, which is in ninth. Uh, still only four strokes back, so coming down the stretch, uh, still going to have to see a hot round. As we are on the Frisbee Golf Kiskis. Uh, I hope that's the right name for the course, but uh, it looks like a fantastic course overall as we're on hole number one, 791 foot, 241 meter par four. Uh, I would say this is a standard par four for this course as it is very long and has some shapes and angles that you're gonna have to see a lot of players shape their shots uh, and really long par fours overall. Yeah, and if you're not warmed up, you're going to have to do it pretty quickly. I mean, it is straight as an arrow and long and tight. Yeah, as we're watching Laura here, it looks like he's going with uh, some type of fairway driver, just kind of clips something on that left-hand side. Um, we mentioned this during the first video, but any white stake that you see out there, you're going to see the players. Uh, that is out of bounds as we're watching Temu Nisanen get up there. He is one of the best left-handed players in the world. I know Temu very well from many years of traveling with him and staying with him over in Finland. I think that this course definitely plays, uh, plays to his game a little bit. Rips the hyzer flip down there. Looks to be a good shape if it needs to hook up just a little bit. I think it's a nice little kick off the tree there. Yeah, that's a great shot right there. Uh, we saw the players the first round struggle just a little bit on this hole as there is some out of bounds over there on the right and left side of the fairway. Um, really just about every hole, you're gonna find a lot of the par fours out here are in the seven to 800 foot range where you're gonna see players have to rip a drive and have it late flip uh, or late fade as we watch Yale kind of go with a, this sums up Yale's game right there. We're gonna see a lot of Great that of shot. him. I can imagine we're gonna see a lot of that of him. He is known for those super straight mid-range shots with almost zero fade. I mean, that was picture perfect for a hole like this. Just keep it in the fairway, take a bite out of it, take it shot by shot. Yeah, as we're watching Vino, um, once again, you can see him kind of hovering over his disc right there. I can imagine that the players are dealing with some type of uh, wet conditions. It doesn't seem as cold as the first day. As we see Vino throw, it looks to be some type of driver, which seems to be Pretty safe he got past those kind of wiry trees at the end of the fairway. Yeah, it looks like there's a little pocket right there at the early part of the fairway where it opens up a little bit. Yeah, it looks like Laurie is just kind of going with a, a easy layup right there, probably not wanting to attack the basket too hard as Vino is ready for this round and he wants to do better on this hole than he did the first round. Yeah, absolutely. I think he took a quadruple bogey the first round. I'm thinking he's going to take a better score. Great shot there. Just, again, keeping it right down the middle. Like Will was saying, just that's how he plays his game. Yeah, and here comes Tamu with the best drive out of the bunch. And it looks like that slips out early for Tamu, That is not what he's looking for right there. Yeah, and hopefully he stayed in because there is some out of bounds over there on the right. Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks like Tamu is safe. You can kind of see the uh, out of bounds over there as he goes for a super skip shot. Yeah, really nice. Just getting right back into the fairway. He'll have an easy up and down from there. Yeah, and Yale just looking to get up and down from here to get a par. Um, and based off of the scores we've seen from previous rounds, par is not a bad score to get on just about any of these holes. Yeah, for sure. And Tamu kind of just ripping that one over. Maybe a little bit of excitement here on the first hole. Maybe some jitters. Hopefully he settles in quickly. Yeah, and something that we see too, uh, I think we're going to see a lot of the players do, is the classic jump putt layup. Um, I say that just because we're going to get into the woods coming up to where it's pretty thick. The trees are really thick. The uh, um, Not necessarily underbrush, but I think it's just the trees themselves. You can't really just poke out and get to the basket if you get off the fairway. Good uh, run there from Tamu. Yeah, Tamu just kind of... Uh, he had a great drive to start out. It kind of just seems like maybe he's dealing with uh, grip issues. Not sure if it has to do with uh, wet disc or maybe the cold is messing him up. Um, but he's starting with a double bogey. Not exactly what you're looking for, but we did watch Vino the first round. He did take that quad bogey like we talked about and still finished with a pretty good round. So um, Tamu's still in it. Obviously just needs a little bit of confidence and, and he'll get right back at it. Yeah, and he only uh, loses one stroke to Lari, Yale, and, well, and he loses two to Yale and Fino, but still in good position here. We head into hole two. Hole number two is 407 feet, 124 meters. This is one of those holes, uh, I would say this is more of a bonus birdie. Um, it's going to be interesting. I think the best person to have a chance at getting this is going to be Tamu. Um, just because yep. the big lefty flex, I think, might have more of a chance to go further to the left than a big right-handed hyzer shot. Uh, we saw a lot of the players throw that big right-handed hyzer and not have enough glide because the disc is obviously just coming to the ground. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect example of that right there. It's going to be a long jump putt from below the green. Yeah, that was a great shot by Yale, as uh, I'm sure Vino is trying to follow that same exact shot. Yeah, and he plays it really high and really tight, trying to get over those trees and get as far left as possible. That's one way to kind of bite off that corner is going way over the top. Yeah, and Lori just trying to get back on track here. He seems to be pretty wide. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what Tamu does here. And there's the Anheuser like you were talking about. It doesn't look like it's got quite the flex. If he had gotten it just a little flatter, you could see that working out very well. Lori with a really long jump putt. Not a bad bid right there. Um, here is Tamu from his drive. Uh, this is a really good example. We're going to mention it a couple times. How the uh, off the fairway just gets so thick. Um, that it's very fortunate to be able to have a route towards the basket. Yeah, the rough comes into play just as much as out of bounds does on this, of course. I mean, if, if you're in the rough, it's tough to get out, tough to have a look at the basket, you're usually having to throw a shot that doesn't look very comfortable. Yeah, and Vino's looking to pick a stroke up on the group right here by hopefully knocking this in. Mm, just off the cage. Uh, that was a pretty good opportunity right there for Vino to kind of take charge. Yeah, it's out the outside the circle, so you you know you can't beat yourself up too much, but it is a missed opportunity. Pars for the group, not too much scoring separation separation going to be happen happening on this hole as we are headed into hole number three coming up. Oskari. Oskari käy vähän korkeamman linja, varmaan vähän on kyllä erinomainen. Kyllä. Siinä on tuommoinen pikku altti saareke, tuommoinen, tai oikeastaan lammikko, altti lammikko. Tuossa on semmoinen 
Well, number three is 308 feet, 94 meters. Um, this is definitely one of those holes that these players are going to be looking at getting a two on. You see the yellow stakes over there to the left. That is a hazard area. So the players will be taking a stroke, but they're going to be playing from where the disc lands. Got Yale up first. Yale is not too much of a forehand player, uh, but he does have a very smooth turnover. Yeah, and it works beautifully there. Maybe not skipping quite far enough, but he will have a long look at it, staying away from the hazard. That's definitely the risk you're taking with the backhand is it flexing out on you and finishing in that hazard, as Vino maybe does. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it looks like to be like he's right on the edge. Can't really tell too much right now. Might have to break up the, the rope on that one. And here's the first forehand of the group coming in. Laurie is uh, going with a tight, really overstable disc. Yeah, it looks um, like it came out a little bit early. He doesn't have too bad of a look, though, even though that seemed really early and to the right. Uh, he didn't go out of bounds, which is a bonus. As uh, we're watching Tamu here. Yep, he played it a little tight as well. Yeah, being a left to right shot here, Tamu definitely needs to take advantage of all of these type of holes. And you saw right in front of the tee pad, the raindrops falling in that puddle. It looks like it is coming down now, making it tough on these players, especially for the forehand play, which we did see. It can be kind of tough to keep your disc in the hand there. And Vino's, Vino's got a... Uh... Outside the circle putt right there. That is a huge putt by Vino. Really great look. He, he took advantage of staying outside of the stakes, not in the hazard. Will take the birdie. Yeah, with Lori uh, missing that opportunity on the birdie and Vino can in that. Uh, definitely a little bit of a momentum given over to Vino at this time. Uh, as Yale is looking to also cash in as he just misses it on the outside, he's about 30 feet or so, and Tamu with the best drive of the group, just like everybody in the group right now, they're just trying to keep their disc dry. Yeah, it looked like he was blowing on the disc, blowing on his hands, trying to stay warm. Drills the putt, and he will move one back. We'll look, looks like we're gonna have a three-way tie coming out of this hole. Yeah, not bad pars. Uh, that's definitely one of the few birdie holes that you want to be able to capitalize on, although there's a little bit of out-of-bounds area. Um, but coming up, there's some super long par fours and a lot of stroke separation to be had. As we head into hole number four, uh, which is also a par three at 387 feet, 118 meters. Uh, as you can see, very tight fairway here. You do not want to get off the fairway because it's going to be tough to scramble and get to the basket. Uh, you're going to see a lot of players go with either a smooth forehand, um, but I imagine you're going to see players like Yale and Vino, as you can see here, go with that smooth backhand, slow turnover. Yeah, you want to get something with late flip on this one. Don't want it to ride to the, to the right right away. Yeah, and Vino looks at either turned his over too much or just had a late release on that. Um... Hopefully he'll be able to actually get to the basket. Oh, and Tamu gets a, that's a bad break, I would say. Uh, catching the very top of that Christmas tree. Yeah, it gets the very top of the tree. At least he did kick right back into the middle of the fairway. Yeah, and Yale with that super smooth form. That is a great shot right there. And that's picture perfect. That late turn like we were talking about as it's, at least halfway down the fairway, then it's when it starts to ride to the right. 
And that's also a really good looking shot. Maybe a little bit too low. It's not, what look at that skip. slide. <laughs> oh my gosh. That slid all the way to the oh, basket. Incredible. Great shot right there by Lori to get right back in it as he's gonna have a fairly easy putt for birdie. Yeah, he is parked as Temu just laying it up there. Those jump putt up shots allows you to be accurate and control the speed of the disc as it lands on the green. Yeah, and there's Vino once again, just kind of poking through there, trying to just spin it on the ground and slide it up to the basket. Yale with a great putt, as he had uh, probably about a 25 footer for birdie right there. Mm -hmm. And once again, that's a great momentum shift for Yale as he takes the lead. Yep, he'll be our- Sorry, he ties the lead. I shouldn't say take the lead, he ties for the lead yeah. right there. The... Don't forget, Laurie ran on the ground halfway, <laughs> halfway up the hole. Yeah, that was a great, <laughs> Uh, flat, straight skip right on the wood chips. All right, guys, once again, shout out for Prodigy Disc for the main sponsor of the uh, Pro Tour 2019. Uh, we're headed on to hole number five, par four, 860 feet, 262 meters. Uh, once again, this is one of the start of the really long par fours on this disc golf course. This is, a, I'm not gonna say a treacherous hole, but you're gonna see a lot of players throw big shots and then try to attack the basket. Yep, this is one that uh, is pretty open off the top, and then you'll see those little sporadic trees there in the fairway. As you can see, Yale right there. I think that's going to be a decent spot, but it's actually a very fortunate kick out. Yeah, he might be a little pinched off from his backhand. Yeah, and, and those little kicks at the end of flights sometimes, as you can see, the, the, the rain is just crushing really down. coming down now yeah i mean just the 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 two foot kick off the branch that yale got at the very end of his flight is very important because at that point it either takes you away from not being able to throw a backhand at all because of the tree or opens it up just a little bit for you to be able to reach back and pull through you don't need a lot of space but just those uh two to three feet make a big difference because we watch really nice shots there in the fairway yeah that shot by vino was perfect as right next to uh, the one before. Tame and Tamu going. might be going for that corner, and he was. He gets around pretty well and finds an opening around all the little Christmas trees. And there's Yale, just a standstill shot as he's just looking to get into the middle and play for par. Lori is gonna be attacking the basket on this one. I think that's gonna be a little too wide. I don't think that's gonna be a great position. No, he swung it wide to begin with and it looked like it flexed out on him as well. So he's gonna find that rough not too far from the basket. Yeah, and here comes the wind in the background and Tamu is going with the uh, other side turnover. That wow. is an interesting Whoa. shot. What a wow, that is blowing, that just blew my mind right there. Like, who would think the lefty turnover approach on this hole? That was a really nice shot by Tamu. Yeah, I expected him to go hyzer, and he just flipped it around on us. Ooh, and another great kick out right there by yep. Vino. I mean, a five foot little bounce out towards the basket to go from a, a you know, a guarded putt with all the limbs to be able to have just a standard putt. And a great turnover approach. That was beautiful. Yeah, that was a great shot right there by Yale. Just to, um, after he kind of just poked one out there, now he doesn't even have a putt and has a guaranteed par essentially. Really nice shot there from Laurie. And Vino looking to Capitalize and he does. Keeps what it a just putt. Over the cage. What a putt as he is putting pressure 
on Lari and putting pressure on Yale to get some birdies as they are actually uh, putting for par right now. So I'm gonna, that actually puts Vino tied for the lead oh, as Tamu just misses a fairly easy putt inside the circle. Yeah, that's a tough miss, especially after such a great second shot that put him in a beautiful position. Just doesn't take advantage. He'll be two strokes back of the other three guys. Yeah, and you can see there's a lot of conditions going on right now. Uh, gloves, jackets, pants. It's cold outside. It's raining. Uh, pretty standard finish weather, I would say. <laughs> As we head to hole number six, which is a par three, 361 foot, 110 meter. Uh, and you're gonna see a lot of players on this go with the forehand or um, in Yale's case, probably some type of smooth turnover. Uh, I'm sure that Tamu is liking getting to this hole so he can throw a nice yeah. smooth hyzer and get one up there. Yeah, this is a pretty sharp angle. I know cuts it a little too close. Yeah, he's not really going to have too much of a look from there, probably just wanting to get up and down. And this is tough. Yali's going to have to get this really high to be able to get the carry over to the right. Oh, and he grabs a tree a little early. Yeah, and it just it looks like on this hole that it's such a hard, dramatic angle to the right that on a backhand, you're going to have to get it so wide and then have it just hook so hard over to the right. As we watch Lori right there, uh, definitely take advantage of a nice high glidey sidearm. Yeah, but it looks like you really have to push that left side of and the Great fairway. shot right there by Tamu. I know uh, missing that short putt last hole, getting up to these holes to where you need to be taking advantage um, of being that lefty and putting it really close. So that's a, a great comeback by Tamu. Yeah, and a nice outs from these guys. They'll be out of the rough. That's Yali a great. will be left with a long comeback though. Great up shot by Bino right there. Hmm. That one hurts a little bit. And Tamu right here for the sole birdie. Making sure to take his time and pop that right into the center of the basket. It's a great pickup by Tamu as he's only one back of the lead as Yale puts in that nice confidence builder for par. Yep, it's be pretty standard. Same thing for Vino, pretty standard. Uh, definitely a little bit of a confidence builder when it's so wet outside just to have the feeling of the disc coming out of your hand and knowing that it's not going to slip out or hold on and um, it's almost like a warm-up putt, in a sense. Yeah, any clean release is a win, for sure. Uh, headed on to hole number seven, par three, 122 meters, 400 feet. Uh, I would say that this is a nice pickup to have uh, throughout the round. There's not many birdie shots that you're going to see, uh, but this is one of them that these players can attack, just dive it into the trees, and hopefully it doesn't kick around too far. Yeah, this one is so guarded as uh, I think this is another hole that Tamu can really take advantage on for being left-handed, uh, really throw it around as he does right there. That is a great shot wow. by Tamu. As uh, you can see the white stakes right there, the out-of-bounds stakes, as um, Vino was probably thinking about that a good amount as he turned his over. Once again, he's almost gonna have the same approach shot that he did the previous hole. Yeah, he probably wanted to get that one a little less turned over and a little bit flatter so that he got a little late flex. Yeah, and Yale almost throwing the same exact yeah. shot as Vinyl right there. Um, not really too much of a look for birdie, just kind of tossing it by the basket, especially with all the trees around the basket. Mari going a little bit lower and goes with the hyzer play instead. That's actually a great shot right there, really soft landing. Didn't take too much of a big skip, so he's gonna have at least a long look for birdie. And not a bad effort there, it's just so tough to get access to this basket. Oh, Not a bad look from Vino as well. I mean, just a big high sweeping Anheuser putt as Lori looks to take advantage of this good drive. 
And he does. And he Sticks does. It. That's a great putt right there. Going through the trees, a little bit of a straddle, a little bit uphill. Definitely Getting the replay. Great As putt there. Circles pops edge. Pops that one right into that Prodigy T1 basket. And he's happy. He's happy about it. And he wins the race to double digits. See, Tamu once again, great putt right there, taking advantage of having those 25 foot birdie looks as you see the other competitors looking to uh, get pars. And that puts Lari up by one over Yale, Timu, and Vina. We got a really tight race mm -hmm. headed into hole number eight. Yeah, good stuff from these guys. Tamu taking two birdies in a row with two nice putts after the missed one on five. It looks like he's back on his game. And once again, we're headed into a hole that these players are thinking are a must get, which is hole number eight, 318 feet. As you can see, it's on this mound. Uh, you're going to see a lot of players play to that right hand side where it's nice and flat. Um, I'm going to say Tamu has a little bit of an advantage on this hole as uh, the other players are either looking to throw a backhand from right to left or they're looking to throw a forehand as uh, Tamu just spikes it right by the basket. Just makes it nice and simple. Just put, mean, it, put it right there. He's got so much power. He's swinging these hyzers out so wide and they're hanging up long enough to come all the way back. And Laurie right there, he's going to have, uh, that's definitely a look at birdie. I'm going to say it's a, it's a somewhat difficult look as we're watching Vino uh, throw a little bit of a hyzer down there to the left. I'm, I'm going to guess that might be just a quick layup for him. I'm not sure if these guys are going to be running at putts like that with the yeah. rain going like crazy. Uh, you got the really bad elevation as... We're actually watching Yale throw a forehand for the first time today. Yeah, and these aren't great conditions for a forehand. Look how high that basket is in comparison to where he is. <laughs> That's some steep elevation. It's on his knee, it looks like he might have stuck it there right on the side. Yeah. Vino does lay That's up. a smart play right there by Vino with all the conditions going on. Once again, look how high that basket is. Yes, that's crazy. That's a, let, that's, that's a nice angle. What a putt. It takes so much commitment to get it high enough. What? Get up the hill. You and, did it. And he doesn't slip. No fist pump this time. That was a great putt right there. Even Tamu is tossing that one right underneath wow. the basket. I mean, that shows right that's there. What a great putt by Lori. Uh, no fear. No fear. I mean, you have to say that's a smart play by anybody who's laying that up right there. Yale just wants to... Pop That's that one into the basket, which is a great par. Fantastic par save from where he was at in the rough. Making sure that he gets it on the mound and then converting on the putt. It's just, it's so tough. Yeah, it's a little too easy to go down that hill. Mm -hmm. This Tammy might have a little bit of stuff on his hands. It's his right hand, though. There's no yeah. worries. No worries. It's on <laughs> no his right problem, hand. No problem. He uh, <laughs> looks like he laid up into a, a, a dirty place. <laughs> All right, we head to hole number nine, par four, 738 feet, 225 meters. Uh, once again, there's a lot of out of bounds. There's a lot of different angles headed to the basket on this hole. And uh, we have over a 700 foot par four again, which is a pretty difficult shot. Uh, we're gonna see a lot of players try to get in a great position and throw that Spike Kaiser to the basket. Really nice play there by Laurie, right into the middle of the fairway. Yeah, as we're watching, Tamu is actually going with the forehand off the tee pad right here. That is a somewhat surprising play. Um, probably just doesn't favor that left-handed fade too much. He does catch a tree early, but he is safe. Uh, as Vino is looking to just rip a massive hyzer out there. Yeah, he takes it really high. Crashes right down. Looks like he's in the fairway as well. And here is Yale uh, looking at that's that's a picturesque Yale store shot. So smooth, smooth, flat, uh, pretty low. You're not really dealing with too much trouble right there. Uh, going a 
little high here. Temu probably just looking for, ooh. It's gonna say looking for positioning, but I yeah. don't know uh, if he just didn't get enough juice on that. Yeah, or like, maybe he just misplayed it. It looked like it was a little high, which just brought that OB into play. If he had kept it maybe lower and flatter, would have been able to lay up a little bit easier. And that's a great shot right there by Yale. I mean, to the mm -hmm. blind basket right here on this little tiny island, I'll call it. Yeah, there's not a lot of room as Oh, oh no! Hit and roll in for Vino. That is a little bit of an unfortunate break right there. At least he'll be taking it up where his disc came inbound, so he might be able to save par. But that's a, a tough break to go from inbounds to out of bounds. Yeah, hopefully someone, whether it was him, his group, or a spotter, saw that he did hit inbounds first up there before rolling out. Uh, and real quick to Laurie, I think that was for his birdie. I think he's I think looking so. at like yeah, a absolutely. 12 footer for birdie right now. So he's looking at going 12 under as a that's a great recovery by Tamu on that sidearm. Yeah, and he was Laurie was our, our leader coming into this one. Kind of started off a little slow, and he's heating up. And as you can see right there, they gave Vino the spot. As you can see in the video, um, he looks to have hit mm -hmm. on the inbound side, so uh, I do think that is a correct call. Yeah, definitely. Can't convert on the putt. He's going to take it, unfortunately. Oh, Yale! No! Oh, safe. he stays in. He's safe. And look at Lori right here. He's taken advantage of the great shot right there uh definitely a huge pickup as he moves to 12 under um final goes backwards and goes to eight under as yale takes the par and uh temu as well popping in his bogey so yeah that just leaves... kind of going the opposite way um great playing by Laurie on the front nine right there. Uh, he extended his lead by just a little bit. Once again, I am Will Schustrick. I'm with Idris Garcia. This is lead card round three. Only part one though. At the Frisbee Golf Keys Kiss in Tampere, Finland. And you're watching the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour 2019. We will see you on the back nine.